you're with us in uh, our live locations, you walked in and an usher gave you a hook, please do not hook the person sitting next to you. If you're joining us online, come on, scrounge around in the garage and maybe uh, you can find a hook. But bait and switch is what we're talking about today. Let's put our hands together. Let's welcome everybody that's joining us in all of the rooms of the house here, whether it's Summers Point, Egg Harbor Township, or those of us that are online. How do we overcome life's offenses? How do we overcome being hooked because of life's offenses? In fact, the hooks on this were so sharp, I had to get these little cork pieces and put it on because I kept on getting myself entangled. And I thought literally the worst thing for today's message is for everyone to go, oh yeah, he hooked himself. Great illustration, pastor. And so again, if you're in our live locations, please don't hook the person next to you, even though it's Valentine's and you might be mad with them because they didn't do what you expected. Because oftentimes offenses develop because we have an unspoken expectation. In fact, the dictionary says the word offend is resented, annoyed, or typically when someone has done something wrong to you. How many of us have ever been annoyed? How many of us have ever been resentful? Never! You know, how how many of us have uh, had someone do something wrong to us? Every one of us. In fact, I want to start with this scripture to lay the even playing field here. But it tells us in Romans 3, 23, let's read together. For all have, yeah, we're going to say louder. Come on, all locations. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Guess what? You've sinned, I've sinned, you've sinned, I've sinned. Hi, my name's Brandon, and I'm a sinner. I'm gonna offend you. You will offend me, and and that's the very premise for this series we're in, is that There are all of these bait and switch opportunities in the culture that we live in. But as Christ followers, I am encouraging you that we would be so much greater than that aspect. In fact, it says in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8, it says, be sober. I love that. This is out of the King James, okay? Big English here. Be sober. What does the next one say? Be watchful. Then it says, your adversary, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, and his legion are like a roaring lion that walketh, yes, New King James, walketh about seeing whom he may devour. The literal enemy of our souls is throwing out bait, is throwing out bait to see who he can devour. Now, now the context of that scripture is he is looking to devour Christ's followers, those that have kingdom eyes, those that are seeing different, not as this world sees. Now, that's in Peter, but let's rewind all the way to to the Old Testament, book of Job, chapter 1, verse 7. It says the following. It says, the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord and said, from roaming throughout the earth, Going back and forth, again, roaming, laying out bait back and forth to see whom I would catch. Hi, my name is Brendan, and I've had so much offense in my life. I've had so much betrayal. I've had so much disappointment because the enemy of my soul is looking to catch me. He's looking to lay a bait that would catch you and slow you down from the very purpose and the destiny that God has given to each one of us, regardless of where we're engaging with today, how we're listening, maybe today or weeks later, or maybe you're binging on this four years later, and it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I've been caught. 
In fact, in Luke 17, verse 1, it says, Jesus, this is the red letters of the Bible. It says, then he said to his disciples, it is impossible. It is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. So, so what is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying that offenses, hooks, bait and switch, they're, they're going to come. And we've got to be eyes wide open to them. So point number one is so simple today right there in the app or if you're taking notes, but it's, let's say this together. One, two, three. Traps everywhere. Traps everywhere. How many of us have realized as a Christ follower, there are traps, there is a bait and switch everywhere that we turn. Uh, how, how many of us, social media has been a trap over the last 12 months of offense? Every single one of us to an extent. How many of us would say a friendship has come to a point of offense? How many of us would say a family member has offended me? How many of us would say that we ourselves have been offensive to ourselves? Yes. Have you ever thought about that? You can offend yourself. How many of us have been so disgusted by our sin, so disgusted by our addiction, so disgusted by the decision we made, we are literally offended with ourselves. Now, next week, we're going to talk about how do we overcome church hurt in offense. I'm so excited about that. I've literally already written the message because it's gold. So have you ever been hurt by the church or hurt by a pastor or hurt by a Christian or, or something? Next week's message is for you and your friends that don't attend church anymore because it's a bait and switch. They're losing out, not the kingdom of God that's losing out. How many of us are offended sometimes at a billboard that we see? How many of us are offended at politics, whether it's the left, the right, up or down? How many of us are offended by a neighbor? Ever been there before? The way they cut their grass or don't cut their grass. The way they leave their trash can out for multiple days. I, the, or, or they, yeah, I, I used to have a neighbor back in the day that he would leave for work early in the morning and all of a sudden the, the backup horn of his commercial vehicle would go beep, 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 beep at like 4 a.m. in the morning. And the guy had a circular driveway. And I'm like, bro, just drive into the driveway and keep on driving. But not my man at 4 a.m. in the morning. I, I mean, I literally would dream that he would get excited when he drove in in the afternoon to go, 4 a.m., reverse. Beep, beep, beep. And, and what was the devil doing? The devil was going, oh, I'm going to get you, Brendan. I'm going to get you. And he's setting the trap everywhere. Church people. For how many of us church people have been offensive within our life. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 23, listen to this. It says, but we preach Christ crucified. This got me a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. Jesus is sometimes offensive. Have you ever thought about that? And more especially, Jesus is offensive to the religious and to the people that are often very far from the heart of Jesus. In fact, in, again, the Old Testament, in the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 5, Amos was what we would call a, a minor prophet. And, and Amos says, does a bird land in a trap on the ground if there is no bait for it? Does a trap spring from the ground when it has caught nothing? Somebody's saying Amos was talking to the nation of Israel and Judah and going, why? Why are you continuing to fall into the trap of the enemy? Stop being bait. Because if we would stop being bait, we wouldn't fall into the trap. That's what the prophet was saying. And so again, there are traps everywhere in the culture that you and I live in. Even this morning, I opened up social media to check on the icy weather conditions. And, and, and I saw a Christ follower that has professed leadership, 
using absolutely vulgar language in regards to politics. And I was offended at how this individual could do it. What was it? It was a trap that the enemy was trying to set because I was getting myself worked up before a message talking about bait and switch. That's what the enemy will do in our lives. He will get us unfocused from what we should be fixing our eyes on. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But John 10.10 10 says the following. It says, the thief, the enemy, does, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, Jesus, have come that you might have life and have it to the full. See, when we are caught in life's offenses, when we are caught by traps as you're holding that hook in your hand, and if you didn't get a hook uh, when you were coming in, an usher later on in the service can give you one, because at the end of our services, if you have an offense, there are crosses at our locations, and as the campus pastor closes and the prayer team comes up, you can make a decision with that hook, because you might be going, hey, I'm hooked on politics. I'm hooked on a pastor that offended me. I'm I'm hooked on a spouse. I'm hooked on an ex. I'm hooked on something that happened in college today. I'm telling you, today is breakthrough for you. And your opportunities in our live locations is to, to either, if you're strong enough, put the hook in the cross or deposit it at the bottom of the cross, laying it down, surrendering it, realizing that there are traps everywhere and I might have been hooked. The, the other option is with the hook is you can take it home and you can put it in your wallet. You can put it in your Bible. You can put it on a nightstand safely to, to use as a continual reminder that the enemy is trying to trap us everywhere. In fact, what, what my prayer is today, what my prayer is for every single one of us today is this found in Revelations chapter 3, verse 22. It says, whoever has ears... Let him hear what the Spirit says. Now it goes on to say to the churches, we're the church. And my prayer is, God, give us ears to hear. Give us eyes to see the great plan and the kingdom that you have for us. Because the kingdom of God is not based on American Christianity. The kingdom of God is not based on the U.S. dollar. The kingdom of God is so much greater than South Jersey or the Northeast or above the you know, line here and below the line. No, the kingdom of God is so much greater. Come on, let's pray. Father, right now, oh Lord, give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear what you, Spirit of God, are telling us. Lord, so many of us are trapped. So many of us have been caught in the bait and switch. So many of us, God, are deceived today. Our eyes are blinded by the things of this world. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Spirit of God, come. And give us eyes to see, to see the traps that have been laid for us, to hinder the purpose and the destiny that you are giving to us. And we pray this and we ask this right now in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said, amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. Let's celebrate. Come on, let's put our hands together. Come on, church, let's put our hands together and let's celebrate that God is giving us eyes to see. So number one, traps are everywhere. Uh, Number two, this Satan knows your bait preference. You ever thought about that? Now, I'm not a big like, let's talk about Satan, but yeah, I I wanna talk about him. And I I know there's probably a third of us here that, uh, you know, we would go, yeah, I don't even believe in the enemy. Well, why is the world in such a hot mess? And the second group of us would go, okay, yeah, but does he really exist? And, and, and when, when, I, when I use Satan, I'm talking about the demonic realm, okay? Because the demonic realm is a fallen angelic realm that's pure purpose is to come against the purpose of God. And if you don't believe in the demonic realm, I invite you to come on a trip to me to the nation of Haiti, 
I invite you to come on a trip with me to the nation of Mozambique where you can see literal demonic manifestations. I invite you to come with me to the nation of Malawi in Central Africa where there are roving tribes of demonic children that I have worked with. Their family members give them over as children, as a child living sacrifice to a demonic manifestation. And these children roam the countryside like animals I've seen this with my eyes. And so we are blinded here in this country. We are blinded to the demonic, and yet the enemy knows your bait preference. For for example, I've never had a problem with gambling. Gambling is not a temptation. It is not a bait preference that the enemy can set for me. Uh, I remember my first time I gambled as a teenager. A friend gave me $20 of his money because I didn't want to waste my money. So he said, here's 20 bucks. I lost all of the $20. He looked at me. He says, I ain't never giving you money. And I said, I'm happy because I'm never gambling again. So I can drive past a, a gambling billboard and not be tempted. I can go into a casino and not be tempted. I don't even like going into those places. It is not an issue. It is not a bait preference that the enemy can use. But if we talk about betrayal, if we talk about being abandoned, which I was by my father and mother, betrayed by my parents, oh, there is a big bait preference that the enemy will use in my life there. And again, 1 Peter chapter 5, 8 tells us, be sober, be watchful, open our spiritual eyes to the bait preferences because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking, seeking to lay traps everywhere, number one, because it's a bait and switch. And again, we read this, but Job 1, 7, just a reminder, it's throughout the word of God. Literally, thousands of years prior, it said, the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered, I have been looking for those people to devour. I have been roaming. I have been setting traps everywhere. Traps for this one, traps for that one, a hook for this one, and oh, I'm gonna try and get them. And if you've never read the book of Job, please, I beg you, read the book of Job because the enemy was trying to set a trap for Job. And Job says, I ain't got time to take that trap. I am not gonna come against the plan of God in my life. I might lose everything, but I am not going to offend God himself because he is the one that gives me life. And so the enemy knows your trap preference. He knows your bait preference. I think many times our bait preferences are found in our freedom issues. And so if there's a freedom issue, if there's a struggle, if there's a generational curse in your family, is if there's a family of origin issue, if there's a temptation that your dad had and your grandfather had, th- then I can guarantee you that that is a similar area that Satan is going to lay the bait to hook you with. That's why I, I love this church. I love that we believe in freedom. In fact, if you've gone through freedom, put your hands together and let's celebrate. Come on, so many of us have gone through freedom and and so many of us in this current semester that are going through freedom. But, 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 But the bait preference is often found in our freedom issues. And that's why it is so important that we go through freedom that we take the 13 weeks, and, and as we're soaping this week in John, in scripture, observation, application, and prayer, I hope you're soaping with us. Even as we are soaping, we are seeing that Jesus continually is encouraging his disciples to find more and more freedom. We don't just go through, through freedom one time and go, oh, I'm free. But we go through it over and over because it's like peeling away an onion. You want to get deeper and deeper. And honestly, I look at myself at my age now and go, I'm just beginning to deal with the traps 
that the enemy has set within my life over and over. And he takes those traps and he knows the bait preferences. He knows the way that he can catch me. He knows the freedom issues. And the yellow one might not work, but he's going to give a green one with a little pink on the side. And Brendan's going to go, and I'm going to get it. And all of a sudden, I'm stuck. And I'm still acting like a Christian. And I'm still worshiping. And I'm still tithing. And I'm still, but guess what? There is an offense that is stuck on the inside of me. And I'm pretending that it's all right. But guess what? Slowly, those hooks start to get septic and they slowly start to fester and they slowly start to begin to poison my whole body. Please press in for this from the inside out. So church, we can play church, but some of us are dying. Oh, you're not dying yet on the outside. You still look cute. You still smell good with that cologne, sir. But I know that there's an offense and there's a hook. And that's why this church will not vacillate from preaching the truth. This church will not vacillate from Jesus being the redeemer that we need within our lives. And that's why there's like 50 to 60 different groups at the church that you can choose from. Because for some of us, the bait is money and it's financial peace. For some of us, the bait is a man that your marriage is falling apart. For some of us, the bait is loneliness as a young adult. For some of us, the bait is being a mom. As some of us, the bait is a parent. I mean, the list goes on and on. And so we have what's called free market groups. Like, what's your bait? And get in that group with other people that have struggled with the bait. I mean, my wife and I, we have like, I don't know, what, what, like 20 to 30 people, parents on Thursday night on Zoom, uh, gathering together in, in intentional parenting. And I told my wife, I said, I'm so glad that everyone else is a hot mess just like us in parenting. Amen? Yeah, come on, appreciate it. Because if you're a perfect parent, please come and lead my group because there's a bunch of us just staring and saying, we all need help. Why? Because my parents were a hot mess and I don't need to be a hot mess. So I'm going to educate myself in the bait preference that I'm not going to fall into. And I'm telling you today, when you choose to lay that hook at the cross, when you choose to believe in the freedom of Jesus, there is a supernatural Holy Spirit that falls upon you and gives you strength to be able to say, I'm not going to fall for that hook. or I'm not going to fall for that hook. I'm not going to fall for that hook. And I'm going to begin to fully trust in God. I'm going to mature as a Christ follower. So number one, there are traps everywhere. Number two, Satan knows your bait preference. And number three is God has made a way. Let's say it together. God has made a way. Come on, rule out all of our locations. God has made a way. And that's what we will preach day in and day out. It's what was talked about yesterday at our Cumberland County in Vineland interest meeting that Jesus is making a way in Cumberland County. It's what we talk about online. It's what we talk about in our groups. It's what we talk about in our student ministry. And it's what we talk about in our children's ministry is that God will make a way. Yes, the fishy is trying to hook you. But guess what? God has made a way. I know you've got your mask on, but come on, all locations, turn to a neighbor, mask on, and tell that neighbor in their eyes, God has made a way. Come on, look at the other neighbor and say, God has made a way. And this scripture, yeah, come on, let's put our hands together. This uh, scripture in Hebrews 12, I know we've read it a lot, but I think there's a prophetic word of freedom right here. And the title says, A Call to Endurance. And in Hebrews 12, and we don't have time to unpack it, it's so rich, I pray that you take it as homework today. But in verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge or a great cloud, of witnesses to the life of faith. Let us strip off 
every hook, yes, it's going to be painful. And every sin and weight that slows us down, whew, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Instagram. Oh, those Christmas pictures of the perfect family, you know it tripped you up. The, the, the model that was airbrushed and you looked in the mirror and said, why do I not look like that person? The, the, the w- whatever is tripping you up, the writer of Hebrews is going, rip it out! Because it's tripping you up. And he says, let us run. Run, sweat with endurance the race that God, not man, not a president, not a political party, not a health care, not, not another bailout. No, no, that God has set for you. No one else, but God has set a race for you. Verse 2, a life scripture. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. The pioneer and the perfecter of my faith. Yes, there's a bait and switch at every corner. There is a Christ follower using lewd language in politics and I can't believe it. But the writer says, come on. Come on, fix your eyes because come on, Christ followers. Too many of us are chasing the lure and it's not of God. But fixing your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith for the joy, joy, joy set before him, he endured the offense of the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. What does that tell me? That Jesus has overcome every single offense that you might have today. Verse 3 says, I love this. Let, what's that first word? Say it loud together. What's that word? Consider. Take time to ponder. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners. Other words, offense. Consider. Consider that Jesus was offended by you and me. Remember, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. Then it says, so that you, and this is a prophetic word for you today. Let's read it together. So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Come on, are you listening, Summer's Point? Let's read it together. So you will not grow. Come on, one more time. Not grow weary and and lose heart. You know what the tactic of the enemy is for you? Weigh you down. And he the enemy of your soul will do everything he can to wear you down and lose heart. What do you think the last 12 months have been? Wearing us down. Wearing us down, the kingdom of God. Wearing us down with politics. Wearing us down with tension. Wearing us down. And yes, we're going to address every single one of them. We will not be ashamed of dealing with the sin in our own hearts. But the tactic of the enemy at the end of the day is to wear us down, to get us to take the bait, to chase the bait. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not a bad fisherman, but can I be honest? And I've fished all over Southern Africa. I've fished the uh, United States. I've fished the Caribbean. I've fi- fi- finished, uh, fished the Mexican Peninsula, uh, California. I mean, I've done all of that. There's no one time in all of my fishing that I've ever caught a fish without bait on the hook. Because a fish ain't that dumb. And the enemy knows what bait to set for you. My bait is very different for you. So today as we close, and online too, in our physical locations, let's take the cross of Jesus Christ that is before us very serious. What, what is that hook? Is it, 
Can I be honest? Is your ex wearing you down? The Bible says that the battle is not against flesh and blood, but it is against the demonic realm that is trying to wear you down. That, that's Brendan paraphrasing. The battle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and forces of darkness. You know what the forces of darkness are trying to do? Wear you down. Stop you from being connected to a local body of Christ. Stop you from showing up. Stop you from fulfilling the purpose and the destiny. And some of us, if I can just be so brutally raw and honest, you're fixated on chasing the bait. Come on. You are a Christ follower. And you are taking the bait. And you are wearing yourself out. You have a bad attitude. You are just running over and over. And whether the bait is an ex, whether the bait is a business partner, whether the bait is an institution, whether the bait is yourself, Jesus says today, I have made a way. And that way is my son. No matter how clever, how rich, how poor, how good looking, how bad looking, how offended, how messed up, or how perfect we think we are. Jesus says we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And it is only my son, Jesus, that died on the cross that can redeem the lure and the hook that is stuck in your mouth. So the choice we have today is to either trust that Jesus is gonna take this out and throw it away. Or we can pretend that the hook is still stuck in and no one can see it. But please, hear my heart today. You are rotting from the inside out. And that also is the tactic of the enemy of our souls to steal, kill, and destroy. But today, right now, for all of us, no matter who we are, Jesus says, I come to give you life. And I come to give you abundant life to the overflow. So stop chasing the bait and fix your eyes on Jesus. Let's pray. Father, right now, fill us with eyes to see and ears to hear. Fill us with a mind to conceive the plans that you have for us. Father, we repent now. We repent of the offenses that we might have in our hearts and in our souls and in our minds. We ask that you remove that by the power and the healing touch of Jesus Christ. And we pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.